This is Jordan Tao with JT News. Well, 20-something years later, even more than that, okay, 25 years later, 28 years, sorry, into his career, Wayne is still rapping at his best. You know how rare that is? Most people fall off. Wayne's still rapping like he did. This is just, he just never stopped. He never stopped exercising that muscle. Even at the height of his career, he's still recording some odd songs per day because he really loves it. It's not just a hustle for money for him. Money is nice, and it provides him with whatever he wants to do, right? You never really ha heard Wayne have too many money problems until Birdman didn't pay him, but then Birdman did pay him, so now he's good, right? So uh, he put out this song, Uneasy, with uh, Wayne and John ba Batiste. And uh, it was, it's really good, bro. You got to go check it out. I'm sure you guys checked it out already, though. Um, then we got Tony Yeo showing off a tour bus on 50 Cent Final Lap Tour. Bro, come on, bro. We're showing off tour buses now? Like, look at the, you don't even own it. You rented it. It's a rented tour bus for the tour, and it has marble floors and wood in it. Nice. I would expect that 50 Cent would want himself and you guys to both have nice plush tour buses on a tour in your 40s, for sure. I'm not even trying to play them. I'm just saying, like, and, you know, people still sleeping on bunks. It's not luxurious being on tour. I've been on small legs of tours before. It sucks, bro. These little blast bunks. <laughs> it's like torture. Um, anyways, then we got Fat Joe Ashanti. Okay, so Irv Gotti goes off on Fat Joe, calling him like, you know, he doesn't even know anything about me and Ashanti and calling me a sucker. He went too far. Uh, you know, he should have called me and had words if we were friends. He's not my brother anymore. You know, maybe it's just me being stubborn. I'm sitting on a hundred and something million now. You know, F him. You know, I, I could hear him on that, you know, even though I do think he was a sucker for going after Ashanti the way he did 20 years later, you know, but Fat Joe was his friend. See, I don't know you. I don't know. I'm not friends with Irv Gotti. Fat Joe is. That was a sucker move as a friend to go. You know, I need content for my show tonight. You know, Fat Joe's showing how much money he doesn't have. Right. He doesn't have the freedom to not report on stuff because not many people want to go to a Fat Joe show. Not many people, the, he needs the, the money he's getting from the show he does on Revolt. He needs all that. He's showing that he does. He can't pick and choose like, oh, I'm not going to talk about that because that's my. No, he has to play the media game because he wants to be media. Right. And he's, you know. He's caught himself in a predicament where Irv Gotti doesn't want to be friends with him anymore. It's not a big loss, but it's just like Fat Joe, Fat Joe was a sucker as well for doing that because you guys were friends at that moment. It's not like you were past friends. It's like you were friends that moment. Um, so that reporter, Megan, uh, that was reporting on Megan and Tori's trial is milking this. She's milking it. She is milking it. So people wrote letters to the judge in support of Tory Lanez, just saying, hey, please don't give him such a bad sentence. He's this guy. This is his character. It's like character references. Well, this woman um, is just milking. This I've, Nobody's ever heard of this woman before. She did good reporting. Don't get me wrong, you know, but it's almost stalkerish at this point. She chose a side. She chose Meg, right? And, and, you know, Tori deserves some type of punishment, but Tori has friends that are going to write in for him. So Stefan, Don, and Melly, and a bunch of other people wrote in letters, even Red Cafe. Remember Red Cafe? <laughs> even Red Cafe wrote a letter. She exposed all that so these people could get canceled. She wants them to get can canceled. Iggy, this, she's exposing the letters and who wrote them and this and that. It's like... This woman's going above and beyond. She's doing documentaries on this now. She's on Vlad. It, it's crazy, bro. That's like stalker vibes. Then we got uh, Tupac. Uh, Keefe D is facing extreme charges for the Tupac killing. 
uh, somehow they're going to link him and they're actually going to, I guess they charged him with something. I mean, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, you could tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, I can't tell if Keefy D's out of jail or not. But I don't know, man. It's getting crazy. Um, anyways, uh, lastly, we got someone threw a book at Drake while he was on stage. He says, you lucky I'm quick before I have to beat your ass. Fan throws a book and Drake catches it in midair. This is Jordan Tao with JT News. I'll check you on the next one. Peace.